lot about what I'm going to talk about. I'll say a few words about myself in a second, but my name is Alexander Ingley. The intended audience. Okay, so this... Uh, the in wow, I shouldn't be screaming so much. Um, the intended audience for this talk are really developers, um, entrepreneurial back-end developers, people who uh, want to start a company um, and that do API development. I guess it could be useful for other people to see some of the, the terrain or some of the pitfalls. Okay, so who am I? Um, I worked with unmanned aerial vehicles in the UK for a while, uh, where I focused on decision-making systems with AI. Uh, worked with large primes. Uh, basically, Rolls-Royce makes the, fuses, the engines, uh, Talos communication systems, uh, VA systems makes the fuselage, etc., etc. While I focused on the decision-making systems. Uh, now, however, I'm doing a PhD uh, in interaction design, so user experience at the Royal Institute of Technology. Uh, but my project has to do with trauma medicine in, uh, at Karolinska. More importantly, though, I founded three companies in the last four years, so a PhD student has time to do other stuff. Um, over that time, I've taken in about 12.5 million sec in seed funding over these companies and made some expensive mistakes as a back-end developer that I'm hoping you guys can learn from. Uh, over these companies, uh, there's been about three developer employees or consultants that I've been using. Some of them had more, some of them had five, some of them had two. Um, this type. Okay, so the companies, I'm not going to talk too much about the companies, but one company is called Digixam, um, the other demandcalendar.com uh, and waitress.com. I encourage you to check out the websites. First one is pretty much a success already. Uh, two other ones are about to become everything's looking good. Now, now we get to the real presentation. Okay, so as I'm sure you're familiar with, very few investors will invest in a PowerPoint presentation. Usually you need a, uh, a prototype, something to show that there's traction, or something to show that there's uh, that, you know, proof of concept. And if they do invest in PowerPoint, it'll cost you a lot. It'll cost you a lot of equity, and you won't get that much money for it. And uh, since you guys are developers, you're going to build a prototype first. Um, when you build a prototype, you're going to be good at some things and not so good at others. For instance, for the first company, DigiExam, I, uh, my first ever C-sharp program, first ever C-sharp program, did real exams at the Stockholm School of Economics with real people's grades and exams. So what you do, of course, is you build this, you get a prototype, you make sure that it works, and then you get somebody, you get the funding, and then you get somebody else to clean up your mess. Some things you're good at. For you, I'm thinking that's back-end development. Uh, it is for me. Other things I'm not that great at. And, and that's natural. Um, but of course, um, you'll use your own API. And you're probably the only developer for the first six months, maybe more. I mean, it usually takes about a company about a year and a half. <coughs> ah, thank you. Uh, it usually takes a company about a year and a half to, to, to get off the ground. So you'll be the only developer for a while. Maybe you have a friend or something, somebody to work with, uh, but you'll be sit sitting next to each other. So the understanding of the API will grow gradually. Um, documentation will feel like it's a waste of time because things change. You try something, you change it, and it probably is at that point. Probably is. You're in a hurry. And don't really fight that change. Uh, so don't really fight that urge. You, know, it, you are in a hurry. Your personal funds are running out. Um, you want to be first to market. Uh, you have an event you want to you pitch your idea at, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You are in a hurry. However, hopefully, there will be a time when you get the funding. You get the money. And you'll be really, really busy. You'll have a lot of things that's happening. You have pitches you have to go to. You have um, people you need to hire. You have, maybe you already have users. You have traction. You have commitments. You want to get press, et cetera, et cetera. You'll be really, really busy. And at that point, it's natural to think, OK, well, this API is not that bad. It's, it's, it's good. It's, uh, it works. I have it all in my head. It's easy. But you've had six months to, to, to build that understanding. Um, so you think that somebody can just come in and, and use the API, and there's no real documentation. Eh, that's not going to really, that's not going to work. That's not going to happen. What's going to happen is that your developers will be asking you all the time, oh, how does this work? What data do I put in here? What data do I get out? What's optional? What's required? Um, et cetera, et cetera. And that's natural. Are there side effects to this API, to this call? What happens? 
If you have just one developer at that point, you're going to spend more time explaining to that person how the whole thing works than if you just did the documentation. If you have two developers, you can spend twice the time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so when you get the money, it's time to start documenting. Not just documenting, we'll get to that in a second. But really do it before you hire or you won't have time. It's better that you sit on the money for a few weeks uh, until you get everything in place. Even if you have them ready, lined up, either they're going to sit there, be really bored, or they're going to start pestering you for, for information. It's probably going to be the latter, because they really, they really want to get to work. One small thing, I really like the API, API Blueprint. It's really, really good. I'm not going to say that much about it, but it's really good for building a, uh, a documentation that's really nice to, to read. So, your developers are really trying to build a mental model, right? How does this work? What can I do with this API? What can I do with this API? Do I need to, uh, to ask the developer to build some more uh, endpoints? Yes, of course they will, but that's a whole other issue. Um, they really need to be able to, to get this mental model. Now, I'm not, when I say document, I don't mean that you need to write a long, long document about how it works. That's good, you should. But that's not going to be the only thing that you need. They'll read it, they'll say, oh, they'll build their first uh, call, they'll build their, uh, build their uh, Android app or iPhone app or Angular web app, and they'll start sending in data to your, to your API. They need to play around with the API. And when they do, they shouldn't break something. If they break something, remember, this is a prototype. You've built this prototype. You know it's a prototype. It is a prototype, but if they start breaking something, if, they, if some, something, some bad data creeps into your backend because you haven't been adequately paranoid, I call it, then they're going to be reluctant. They're going to think, oh, whoa, I shouldn't be doing this. I should ask first. I should make sure that I don't do anything. Because if they send something into your data uh, and corrupts the whole database or something, even though you say, oh, yeah, sure, sure, thank you for finding this bug. Uh, I'll fix it now. They're giving you work to do, and you have plenty of other stuff to do. They won't feel good about it. So um, as a backend developer, especially as an uh, entrepreneurial backend developer, it's really good to be paranoid. You're protecting the data. You're the gatekeeper. Um, when the request comes in, make sure that it's flawless, that it's perfect, or that it's not accepted at all. Roll back the changes, do transactions, roll back everything, and give them an, an error message. And the error message is a really important bit, really. Um, yeah, so you don't, the product may be a prototype, but the API endpoint really can't be. It's better if you have fewer endpoints, but make sure that they, that they work. Now. When it comes to the error messages, and this is really the important bit, um, make sure that they're built for developers, and not really the public. Maybe if, um, yeah, if, if your product's already out there, your company's already a success, you can do uh, cryptic error messages or something that just says what went wrong. But you're building this for developers. You're making sure that you're helping them uh, understand their own code. What do they send in? What did they get back? Um, be really descriptive about what was wrong. And when I say that, I mean their data. I mean that you should be, you should basically say that, oh, you sent me an array and array index number two was wrong in some way. Um, that helps them because they understand their role. Remember, they're building their app or, or something uh, and they're not really sure what's going on either. Why was this wrong? How is this, uh, why was this timestamp too early or too late? Uh, why was the time zone not accepted? Maybe they send in two timestamps. One is in the wrong time zone. They have to match. Make sure that everything is, is, is in there. Um, I love to make sure that my, the traffic between our, our uh, clients and, and, and server is really slim. I don't know why it's a fetish. Um, I don't want it to send anything that's not really required, which means that most of the times I only need to send a number. It says, oh, you know, this is wrong, this is wrong, and then the client will just uh, show that to the user or correct something. In the beginning, though, put in an extra description. 
you can strip it out later. Make sure that there's just really descriptive error messages in the beginning. Um, yeah. Wow, that was quick. So, takeaway from this talk. It's really just three things. The more effort you put in, the less they cost. Remember, your time is really... Your, the price of you is constant. If you put in one hour or more of work in the beginning, it doesn't cost the, the investor more money. If you have the, uh, the consultant put in more, one more hour, it costs a lot of money. Make sure that your time in the beginning is not as valuable as theirs. We're talking early stage companies now. Make sure there's a robust API before you start paying people to work on it. And lots of descriptive error messages. But remember, you're helping developers, not fighting hackers. That was it. <laughs>